Did you catch last week? It was jam-packed between racing ferries, waking up to a tsunami advisory, and not being able to anchor, we had our hands full. Hey everyone, and welcome to our crazy life on board Tangaroa. Two years ago, we decided it was time for our family to move on to a boat, but not just any boat. 1969 aluminum trawler that needed a lot of work. Of course, being the crazy people we are, we decided we could do the whole refit ourselves. I personally am surprised that we're not divorced yet and that our kids have not disowned us. But soon, Tangaro will be ready for our trip around the world. We hope our adventures inspire you to live each day with laughter and appreciation. Visit us at onboardtangaroa.com for early access to ad-free videos. After our hike around the lake, we pulled up anchor and we headed towards Fulford Harbour. This was a new place for us and it's kind of the big ferry terminal for Salt Spring Island so we couldn't wait to explore. They're just passing this little tug and crane tow here. In fact, they're bringing in new docks for somebody. Don't forget to check out our Patreon page. Every time we get 10 new Patreons, we have a draw and we give out prizes, including Tangaroa swag. So my sister is scaring the bejesus out of me. Bejesus? There is a big ship coming through the fog there. You can see it, it's doing 14 knots. And luckily Krista just made a course correction to go port to port with it. But I'm like, in these channels, always port to port, you scare me. And it's not that she scares me, I just don't want to raise her kids. Is that selfish? There's Chris and Dave on our time, and there's a really big ship. Funny thing is, right from our perception, they port. looked like they were going to hit. But Chris and Dave actually said they had a ton of room. And this ship was huge. Let's speed it up a bit so you can see the whole thing. So our favorite food when we're underway is Annie's. And no, we're not sponsored by Annie's, but we do like their white shells. Right, Is? That was the hot chocolate. You kind of want to go to sleep when you're underway, eh? I always want to go to sleep. We sure are steaming it up in here though with the cooking pasta. And it wasn't long until we were pulling into Fulford Harbor looking for a place to anchor. It took a bit, but we found a place where we would be comfortable for the night. We also wanted to stay right out of the ferry's way. That's a hook! Yeah, that was good. Wah, yeah. So here we are at Fulford Harbor. I'm just going to take the dog on shore. No one else wants to come to shore. Izzy's pretty cuddled up in her stateroom in front of the heater. Lane's going to work on the water maker, so that leaves me with Maggie. Maggie, we're on a shore. So I just called Ben. Ben said it's okay with the tender just to be here for a little bit. But let's go look around. If not, we gotta go to the outer dock next time. So tomorrow, we'll go to the outer dock. There's a little mercantile store. This is cool. Look. Basil pesto kale chips. They actually look yummy. looks abandoned but I don't know what is all over it whether the otters are having a heyday but it looks like there's like kelp and seaweed remnants like all over it huh. we're gonna go run along the shore what do you think Megs let's go look at the shore someone's cute 
little house they've done up, gardens and everything. Just heard, you just heard my phone ring and that was Sanch Peninsula phoning me saying that the tsunami alert has been cancelled. Kind of a good thing. We didn't see any waves but it's been pretty flat calm but it's an awesome emergency system they have that we signed up for and I'm glad the alert is cancelled. Let's just say that. And that's the ferry coming in over there but I think we're out of its way. Right Maggie? Yeah. Wow I don't think I recorded any of that. 7.50 is the last ferry it leaves here. Okay, so we are parked near a ferry, so we're just wondering when the last ferry goes. Mm, that's actually that's a pretty decent wake there. It is a pretty decent wake. It's 7.50, so that's okay. Blaine and I are, um, we had a nice hike this morning in Bedwell Harbor. It was lovely, but I'm tired. And I might go have a nap. And that's the kind of the cool thing, Blaine, about being on a boat with mm -hmm. no schedule. I can we'll go have a nap. nap. We'll have a nap. Because I may have had like maybe one drink too many last night with Krista and Dave in the hot tub. Likely. One, two. I'm going to go crawl into bed with the dog. Read a book. I'm Chill. Sure, I'm sure she'd not be averse to that. Probably not. <laughs> Good morning, Fulford Harbor. I'm just waking up. It's 9 o'clock, 9.30. Kettle's on. And I look outside the window. And let me show you what I see. I don't see anything. There's fog. Kind of cool looking at that. That's the entrance into the harbor. Ferry dock. It's foggy again. I don't think I've ever seen it this foggy for a whole weekend. Gotta leave room for milk. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. I'd be on to my third cup of coffee, but I'm not gonna do that. Because then I start feeling gross. Hey, you don't feel gross. I'll stick to my two cups for now. We did notice when we woke up that we were very close to a massive mud flat. Nothing at all. It was dead still last night, so the worst that would have happened is the back would have kind of bumped into the mud, and when we woke up in the morning, we'd be floating again on the anchor. <laughs> so. <laughs> Not overly worrisome. Nope. The thing that was worrisome though, is you couldn't see the ferry coming into Fulford Harbour until it was pretty close to us. The local otters though seem to love this weather. What are you doing? Can I have my spot? <laughs> okay, fine, I'm getting kicked out. <laughs> This is called the Tender Shuffle. Lane's gonna drive. Izzy likes the bow. Where am I going here? Right, see that fishing boat? Yeah. Right there. Okay. Or on the inside of it. That's a lot easier. Yeah. And then we're off to go check out that church that we could see from our anchorage. We're gonna go for just a little walk. Yo! And there's Maggie's spot. <laughs> and Maggie's gone. <laughs> it's all Maggie's spot. <laughs> Maggie's just gonna run the dinghy. It takes a bit for Izzy to visualize how the cool fitch works, but she eventually gets it every time. Nice job. Thank you. Bye bye, tender. Let's go see Fulford Harbor. in the background was the city worker power washing the streets. This is the rock salt restaurant and cafe. Yeah. I think it's too cold for ice cream. Oh, but there's coffees and look at all the muffins in here. Do you guys want to get them after? I'm hungry. <laughs> With Izzy's declaration of hunger we were inside to get some coffee and treats. What? 
No, we're just going to get treats cut in teeth. There is also some amazing Izzy, local artwork one, hanging on the walls. Your bedroom. Yeah, that's expensive too. Of course it is. It's an original art. So what are you getting? Do you remember what you just ordered? No. <laughs> Breakfast burrito? Yeah. Which looks really good. Let's see. Looks really good. You can see it. Scrambled eggs, beans, cheese, salsas. I'm not going near you. You're going to be tooting for the rest of the day. These burdock campira ball, cosmic kombu ball. How's your breakfast burrito? Oh, I thought I'm zooming in on you. What are we doing? Like some ASMR stuff? I don't know. Hey, Maggie, you want some really good muffin? She's like, I want food. I'm gonna sit down and maybe mom will give me more food. <laughs> or Izzy will. Nope. Izzy fed the crows and now they're stalking her. If I were to hold this up in the air right now, it'd be gone. You have the crows stalking you. What? The crows are stalking you. I know. And after eating, we were off to find that church. Okay, cool little hut for a tax accountant. This is a cool place. There's a printmaker. Look at all the time. A rosemary. Nice hut. Nice picnic table. And after about a 10 minute walk up the road, we found it. First thing I wanted to do was explore the graveyard right next to it. Oh, it's an old graveyard, a little Catholic church. Peterson died November 9, 1903, aged 40 years. Marianne Peterson died May 16, 1908, aged 36. Rest in peace. Look at this one. About 1948, 1888 to 1948. Some of them you can't read anymore. This one. Richard Dick Pappenberg. So we're at Salt Springs' first church ever. It's the oldest church. It was founded in 1878 by Father Don Kelly. I'm probably not saying that right. It's a Hawaiian name, sorry. Uh, the first Roman Catholic missionary in the Gulf Islands. He erected between 1880 and 1885 by the members of the community. The windows, door, and bell were acquired from Father Rondol's Butter Church in Cowichan Bay. The materials were brought in Indian canoes from Cowichan Bay. Wow. Um, to Burgoyne Bay, and then by ox-drawn stone boat to this site. That's insane. The church was firmly dedicated on May 10, 1885 by Bishop J.B. Brondell. Colored stonework was added about 1973. And this church is all made from Cowichan Valley stone. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, Bell, there's a little um, handle on it. You've got to ring it manually. And the Kanakas, men from Hawaii, came to British Columbia around the year 1850, mainly as laborers for the Hudson Bay Company at Fort Victoria. Some of the pioneers settled on Portland, Russell, and Coal Islands, which we've talked about in previous videos. 
but the largest group chose South Salt Spring where they farmed, fished and logged. Many married Native women and their children attended Beaver Point and Isabella Point schools. They held Hawaiian luau's on Fulford Harbour beaches. They helped build St. Paul's Church and members of several Kanaka families are buried in the cemetery. Some descendants still live on Salt Spring. Wow. Amazing. This church is stunning. Look at all the coloured stone. What do you think, Is? It's pretty cool. Isn't it beautiful? I think Maggie likes it too. Yes. Well, just the history of stuff like this. Look at the stonework. You believe they brought all these over from Cowichan and Indian Canoes Blade? And then they hauled them by Oxdron, which is five kilometers away. The 67 men, women, and children who uh, lost their lives at far too early of an age. The church the is dedicated settlers. or the graveyard? No, the graveyard. If you read the plaques there, it just confuses it. And they are the. Uh, Hawaiian and First Nations ancestors as well. Let's go see about the church. Dedicated to the memory of the, yeah, you're right, 67 men and women and children interred adjacent to the St. Paul's Church in graves that are no longer marked. Their deaths often at far too early an age as part of the history and story of Salt Spring Early Settlement. May they rest in God's peace and be remembered by those who enjoy the bounty of this island. So the plaque rec this plaque recognizes the gratitude and contributions of our island community made by the Hawaiians and their First Nations family. And that kind of concludes our little walk. They're still powerful. Look, the ravens are following you, Izzy. The raven was following you. Eat the berry. I don't have to honk it yet because it's not foggy and he's making faces at me. Not only are we not in dense fog yet, people can see we're not in dense fog yet. So you don't have to honk the horn yet. He's kind of mean sometimes. Like seriously. I was trying to be proactive, but no. Such a poop. Dance doesn't have to be. Where you can't see other vessels. But this is kind of dense. No, it's not. We're not even in fog right now. Are we gonna get in the dance or are we, we gonna get right into it? We'll be up there. No, no, we'll get into it up there. You can see the line of it. I said you're kind of mean sometimes. He's lucky, I love him. And soon we're back at our home mooring. That was perfect. That was perfect. 
Maggie just chased it in. Maggie chased the bird in the boat? Yeah. I don't like birds. They scare me. Where'd he go? He's right in back in that corner. He's gonna come flying out at you. <laughs> you okay, Mom? I don't like birds. Oh, poor thing. This is not my Mom. He, I think he ran into the window and he's hurt, so he can't fly. Ah! <laughs> Mom, it's okay. Can I come in here, Mom? He looks very scared. Mom, can I come in here? Okay, what are you gonna do? Here, let's see. Okay. Oh! <laughs> okay. Hey, there's a bird in the boat. He can't hey. fly because he flew over there. Okay, you gotta put the co cloth right on him, Izzy. Do you want? Okay, do you want me to do this? No, no, no. Right on top of him. No, but that's me. That's what you have to do, though. Then you can carry him outside. Right. I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> you gotta carry him outside. All right. Okay. Hey. I gotta get in between them here. Just be real gentle with him. I am, I am. I called a bird. <laughs> Y'all filming this? Well, I hold on, I wanna s Let me close the door first before you let him go. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. Can you put him on the table, out. maybe? Let me turn these lights off here. Okay, hold on, dad's coming. <laughs> He might be hurt though and not able to fly. I don't know. Cause that's what happens when they run into the window. Well then he's good right there on top of the table. It's cold out here. You ready buddy? Okay, let him out. I see him. I see his, his rear end. <laughs> hey. Okay. Okay. Oh, I hope he lives. See? There he goes. <laughs> She's like, hate birds. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. You saved him. Good job, Iz. Oh. I'm heading out, and I'm just about to go to the door, and Blaine goes, there's a bird on the boat. And I'm like, what? There's a bird in the boat. What? There's a bird in the boat. Huh? There's a fucking bird in the boat. <laughs> I had no clue what he was talking about. I'm like, seriously, the bird in the boat? I just couldn't wrap my head around the fact that there was a bird in the boat. <laughs>